Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovic. Today we're going to be talking about that dude right there, a bike rack to carry that bike. And uh, the key here is that it's a fat tire bike, and so it's pretty heavy. And I got a lot of gear on there, so I mean, where most bikes are probably 25 pounds, 20, 25, 30 pounds, I don't even know, remember. But uh, this one here, you know, even being all aluminum, bike being only 37 pounds, you're probably close to 45 pounds right now. And even uh, the e-bikes, they're rated at, you know, they're 75, 80 pounds for a lot of those too. So given that setup, a regular bike rack doesn't work very well. I looked at a lot of different options out there. I'll be damned if I'm going to pay $400, $500, $600, $700 dollars for a mediocre kind of bike rack that may or may not work that's rated for, you know, about the weight of the bike or maybe, a, you know, a few pounds more, just not going to do it. So I did some digging. Did some research and we came up with that right there. That was only 120 bucks delivered and I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link down below for you. And, uh, but this is a motorcycle rack carrier. Okay. And now it actually is designed to have, uh, I modified mine a little bit. This bracket here, there should be two of these and it should be flipped over so that that pin is up. But there's that one and there should be another one that mounts right there. And then there's a ramp that sits right in here i'm not using that ramp okay i have no intention on it because i'm not using it to carry a motorcycle so i don't need to roll it up but you can see here is the actual ramp piece right there uh and it's got these holes right here that go right on those little pins and some wing nuts these are six spare parts that i don't need for it but anyway that's that ramp setup so if you had an e-bike and you wanted to roll a ramp up on there you could definitely do that so uh what you would do is basically um you'd have your ramps that would mount on this bracket and the other bracket you'd put there you'd undo that ramp and you could hang that ramp right up on here and then roll the bike would basically roll right on there if you want to this bike like i said 40 pounds i don't have a problem loading it by hand but the beauty of this system is that this this bike is going to be on there for a lot of the season and it is going to be on there through some very very rough roads 90 percent of bicycle racks out there are only rated for road use and some of them are even rated to only like 60 mile an hour that kind of thing so they're there you got to read the fine print and uh but having one that's going to be able to hold up to uh four-wheel drive trails mud holes dirt you know uh, the craft that we're gonna you know put it through in the woods is important and i think this rack will do it this thing holds 500 pounds and uh is super super stable and sturdy and durable i mean look at it doesn't even move can't even shake it look at that. i mean it's it's rock solid um so it's uh, it's it's going to be a great setup and uh so what i'm going to do is i i space these so you get these bolts that come in here and they can go in any one of these holes here that you see for your wheels to drop into so you can adjust those those were those extra bolts you saw up there on the ramp so you can set that distance that you want uh, for your wheels and where you want to have them at so I could move this one over to here whatever I want to do to get those to fit in there you have ramp hookups on either side so you can bring the ramp on either side and you got the center pieces in there too so it's a very simple design it's pretty lightweight I don't know what the weight is uh it came pretty nice mine was actually pretty beat up when it got here from Amazon I was quite pissed because I lost a few bolts and stuff but not their fault but this is the box it came in uh, here's what it's actually called right there if you could read that sorry uh, but I will put a link down below for it for you but look at this hole in the box this is how it came with that big old hole in it and it's ripped all the way across and uh, it was you know so it was in pretty rough shape when it got here luckily the only damage to the actual rack was this tube right here you can see a little kink right there where the end of it got kinked to touch not a huge deal it's hidden inside anyway so i wasn't concerned and you can see i had to add my own this nut washer uh this whole assembly this whole bolt assembly uh is different than the other ones because they didn't have one they didn't have one with it it was missing completely so i had to fix that and then one of these black ones underneath um right here see how this is nice black nut washer setup well i had to add my own nut to that one uh because it was missing that again not the manufacturer's problem not even a little bit it was packaged very well uh that was uh you know either at amazon's warehouse or the carriers but somebody punched a hole in the side of that box and it's a pretty thick box like i said they did a good job so 
I'm not holding that, you know, not holding, getting mad at anybody, but it, it worked out well. But that was, so it came pretty well. I can't argue with that. And for 120 bucks, pretty phenomenal. I'm going to go ahead and load the bike up on there and show you what it's all about. So we'll get this set here. Let me put you on a tripod. You will also see this anti-rattle bracket right here. I bought that separate. Did not come with that. Not mandatory because your bike is so well locked to this. But that's going to keep this thing from shaking and wobbling back and forth. Keep this rack from tipping um, and shaking and making noise. So it's just a clamp, sweet, easy clamp system that just puts pressure on there. Uh, they're not expensive. Again, I'll have a link down below to it for you. Um, but the real simple process. Now, with my straps that I'm using right now are just regular tie-down straps. I'm not going to use ratchet straps, but I did order some, uh, the soft shackles that go around the bars and stuff like that too. They were cheap. I'll put a link to them. I got eight of them for like 10 bucks. Um, but that way it's just gonna, you know, I can cinch those down better on the bars when I put them on there rather than just looping them around. It can actually loop around itself and then give me something to tie off to here where they're going to be a little more secure. So I will show you that as well also. And uh, I also have a bike lock right here too that I will put a link to also, but I'm going to lock this to the bike. I'm going to lock it to the bike and I'm actually going to lock it to there right to my tie down point right on there uh, so that nobody can steal it or mess with it or anything like that too. So I will uh, show you that as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put you on a tripod here and we will show you what's going on. Let's see if I can set this here. I'm going to get you on here one sec. All right, so we got the right rack there, we got the bike. We're going to set it and those wheels you're going to see are going to drop right into those slots. That's what I want. I got them spaced with that spacer and then that bar spacer there so that the wheels just barely drop into there and fit snugly and same in the back they are going to fit here in the back between that post and this metal one that's in here too so that's kind of what we're looking for is for those just to drop in there perfect like we want sets in sets in and see how they drop right in you can actually see that coming right out the bottom right here like this that's what i want that is holding that bike in there secure now it's a little you can see it's got a little bit of wiggle room in here but when i actually lock that it sits right in there like that and it'll almost stay on its own actually even now even with all this weight it technically stays on its own so uh, you don't have to worry about too much so and then what we do on this bring in one strap over the bars i'll show you on the other side here too but now that soft shackles will connect to here and hang right there so I can just hook to them. But for right now, for practical purposes, because I don't have those yet, we're going all the way around. Just like this. So I'm going to set this and bring it right back to itself. Fix my strap here. Okay, so we're going to set that in there like that. I'm going to let them rest right against these brackets. Again, that soft shackle will really will, will make that a nice difference. And then I'll cut that strap to length if I need to. I don't have those in yet. But this goes right up and over. Comes right in. Hooks right to itself here like this. I want it like that so it's going to hold. And that's basically going to hold that bike right there. So when I push down on that, snug that right up. Snug this side up. That locks that bike. That's already pretty locked down. That's not moving or going anywhere. Now in the back, I'm just going to go right through this rack, just for that safety factor, right through this frame here. This is all connected. Come right through here, and I'm going to go right to that one just to put pressure on there too. I grab the back one. It's going to go right through here. It's right between these bars, this bar and this bar, and it's all one whole welded piece together and i'm going right to there like that i want to come through that way not that it matters but like that and then i'm gonna snug that there that's snugged up these are snugged up and we have a bike on a rack that's not moving Snug that one up. Like that. And that's locked. Look at that. Look at that. That's not moving even a little bit. I'm going to fix that one just because that's kind of twisted. Let's bring that over. 
Hey, look at that. Locked in, not moving, not going anywhere. That one could actually be a little tighter if I want, but I don't need ratchet straps for any of this kind of stuff. Just simple tie down straps work fine. Now, with these slack pieces that I got on here, I wanna make it where this wheel, actually that one can't turn anyway, so that's probably pretty good. Um, but if you needed to, you could tie those pedals off with one by taking like this back strap here and just tying it right around that pedal so that that strap can't go anywhere. So it's not gonna twist and turn on you. That'll keep that from moving. And then with these, with the leftover, if I want to, I can strap these down. Now, they also give me an option to bolt through those. Let me show you what that looks like here real quick. So if I grab these, sorry, I think I hit the camera. But if I grab these bolts with these pins, if you wanted to, I'm not going to do this, but they do give you the option. But see, it give you this bolt with this cotter pin in here. If I pop that cotter pin out, if we take this, if we want to, you can see how your tires are sticking out of the bottom of this. I could run this right through like that and it's over top of the rim and that locks that so that it can't come out. So I could do that and then put that cotter pin right in that side and that would lock the front one and do the same for the back one if you wanted to. Um, and, and it's a very good option if you want to, to do that. Uh, you probably have to, yeah, so I could run, I could do either one of these if the valve stem was out of the way, but go right through there, right through there and lock that down. So with that all locked and that cotter pin in, there's no chance this bike can move. Okay, there is no chance. And with the leftover slack, once I know what, when I when I have my straps and my soft shackles, and I, I'm not going to do this double loop because it'll just go from right here to, you know, to the soft shackle to there, I will actually cut the slack off of these, tie a knot in it so that they're just right there, sweet, simple, and easy. I will prep these three straps will be permanent bike straps. Uh, for this system two in the front one in the back and I will just cut them and have them set and ready all the time um, But that's it. But like I said zero movement. Okay, there's not much movement to that That thing is rock solid and steady. That's that whole rack moving a little bit that you're seeing on there I mean, but it is solid that bike will not go anywhere and uh, It's on there. It's on there for good and it, we are set. So it's a fantastic system And like I said, you even got your wheels locked uh, so there, there's no possible way for this bike to come out. There's, it, it's physically not possible. Now with the lock, what I would do is take this lock right here and I'm going to go right around the fat tube of the frame and right down to that connector point right here. So I'm going from this loop right to the frame with that padlock and that is going to keep it locked and secure so nobody's going to try and steal it don't lock it to the bike frame because if you lock it to this, this bike carrier they can just pull the pin and take the bike carrier and the bike and the whole setup so you want to lock it to there i could even go around the frame here and around this tube right here and then right to that point to that tie off point on the hitch and locks the frame and the, or I mean the carrier and the bike right to the truck or to the car so nobody can take any part of it that's what you're looking for so there it is sweet simple easy process nothing complicated about it but this is ready to handle the nasty stuff I'm going to take you through those horrible horrible roads um, it's ready to handle a trip from here all the way down to Georgia on the back of this uh, from here to South Carolina wherever I want to go with Missouri Kansas but it is ready to travel on the back of this like this for long distances high miles per hour uh, rough roads doesn't matter it can take it and that bike is not going any place realistically i'm not going to do all that with it on the long travel it'll just ride in my trailer but when i get down there this will spend this will spend december through april pretty much on the back of this thing for a lot of its time now it's important for me to make sure that i have these set up with quick releases here where i have that you know when i have those those soft shackles and then i want this strap cut to exact length and which just a knot and i want everything with the strapping system precise and quick because in order to get into my hatch i have to remove the bike now good news is that it will take i can put this on and off that ramp in seconds these i would not use for most of the time so i don't have them on there okay you could do this but i think it's overkill and it's one more thing i gotta mess with and it's the only part of this system that's noisy okay when i get to where i want to hunt that's the only part that makes noise. 
so I'm not, you'll hear how loud that is. So I'm not going to go through that process of using those. Um, like I said, because I can just pull that bike. Let me show you. Watch how quick it is on and off of here. How simple and easy. So I get there. I get to where I want to hunt. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the front one. This would be on a soft shackle, so really quick and easy. Pop this one. Again, this one would be on a soft shackle, so I wouldn't have to feed all this and mess with it and fight with all this stuff. Sitting in the back one, which I have tied for that demonstration on the pedal holding. So I gotta untie it. That will not have to be tied for me when I'm set because my pedals on this bike don't, don't actually reach in there to be an issue. And then this gets pulled off of here. And gets fed through. And then the bike, like I said, pretty much self stands, comes right off. And I'm ready to roll. So it is a very simple, functional, practical, um, quick. Sorry, every time I pull my camera off the tripod, it hits the button and kills it. But there it is. That's it. Nothing fancy. Nothing complicated. Nothing heavy. Um, out of the way. Functional. And I will have links down below for you. They will show you that. I'll also link a video to this bike. And how I have it set up for deer hunting and for uh, pig hunting and what I'm going to do with it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll be back with more stuff soon. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.